It's summer, a late afternoon. At a wharf on Cape Cod, a young man in a small cabin cruiser is about to cast off for an island several miles offshore. I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon, but are you going to the island tonight? I missed the steamer. Well, that'll teach you not to be late. Besides, you don't take passengers. This is a government boat. Oh, I'd be very indebted to you. My cousin's expecting me. I promise I won't be any trouble. Can't you see? I'm full up with supplies. Well, I'm not very large. Well, please. All right, come on. Oh, thank you. Hey, just put your bags over there. Thank you. I've never been to the island before. How long a trip is it? Oh, about two hours. I love the sea. I come by it naturally, I guess. All my ancestors were whalers from Portland. Maine or Oregon? To a Yankee, there's only one Portland. Maine. Welcome to New England, Yankee. Oh, thank you. You have been awful quiet. I've been making a sketch of you. Me? What? Huh. Hey, that's good. You going to the island to paint? Yes. Yeah, the island's a regular hangout for artists. They're always wanting to paint the lighthouse. Eben won't let him near the place. Eben? Uh-huh. Eben Folger, he's the lighthouse keeper on Dragonhead. I'm, um, uh, what you might call his temporary assistant. Oh. Well, there's the island. Have you ashore in ten minutes. I hope your cousin's still there. Am I glad to see you? Oh, you certainly gave me a scare, Kate. Steamer came in and not a sign of you. Oh, I'm sorry, Freddy. I missed it by one minute. Well, car's down here. Oh, incidentally, who was that who brought you across? His name's Bill. Oh? Pat arrived yet? Yes. Freddy, where's Dragonhead? Dragonhead? Well, it's the lighthouse about a mile offshore. Why do you ask that? The Dragonhead launch brought me over. Do you know the keeper? His name's Folger. No, dear, I'm sure I don't. Now, tell me what you'd like to do tomorrow, Kate. You can paint... Does he come to the mainland every day? He? Who are you talking about? The lighthouse keeper. Well, of course he does. Oh, I don't know. How do I know what he does? Now, come on, Katie. Come on. Hello? Hello, Mr. Folger. Oh, Connie, ain't you got no ears? No visitors, I said. This here's government property. No visitors. If you'd let me explain, Mr. Folger. You get back in your sailboat and get out of here. But there's something in this package that may interest you. Huh? Now, wait a minute. You're the one that stopped me in town yesterday, ain't you? Yes, in Granby's antique shop. Yeah, you're the one who wanted to paint my picture. And I told you if you were to pay me $50,000, I wouldn't be found dead sitting for no charm fool portrait. I know you did. And when you left, I bought this. It's a, a ship model, Mr. Folger. Miss Granby told me you're an expert on ship models. Tell her for me to mind her own business. Oh, it's a great imposition, I know. But you see, I know so little about ship models, and I... I don't like the idea that I may have been rooked. Won't you look at it, Mr. Folger? Eh, uh, maybe. Hey, Evan, do you want me to... Well, hello. Why, hello. Hey, you the one he brung over in the launch from the mainland? Yes. Now, about that... Oh, month. you're pretty smart for a woman. You knowed I wanted this ship model, didn't you? I want to strike a bargain with you. Watch out, Evan. She's a Yankee. You found out I tried to buy this here model. That old lady Granby. Hundred and fifty dollars, she said. My country, that's highway robbery. You can have it for nothing if you'll pose for me. No. Only an hour a day for two weeks. No. You set the time yourself. You hesitate is lost, Evan. You're getting too big for your britches, son. All right. You be here each day at four, but no Sundays. Sundays, too. Oh, Sundays then, doggone it. <laughs> He's a tough customer. You're pretty slippery yourself. I know. Well, I... I guess I'd better go. You must be busy. Yes, I have a little work to do here. Well, I... I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye, Bill. Goodbye, Kate. What's happened to Evan? He's gone into the lighthouse. And you let him? He says he can't pose if there's a fog and he can't control the axe of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't any complaints. We've had such wonderful weather all week. Well, let me see the painting. Oh, my, that looks fine, Katie. Oh, thank you. Hey, that fog's rolling in fast. You're not going to try to sail back in it, are you? Well, I... Oh, you better stay here for a while. Oh, I'd like that, but... Well, Mr. Folger's never been very hospitable. Oh, no, that's nonsense. He's got a heart as big as a house. Come on. All right. I've never been at the top of a lighthouse before. Does the fog frighten you? A little. There's something so terribly lonely about it. I don't mind being alone, but I... I don't like to feel lonely. There's a difference, isn't there? You know, I don't mind being alone either. 
fact is, I deliberately took this job to get away from people. I can understand that. But you know, you wouldn't be afraid of that fog if you went right out into it. Come on, let's go down. I'll show you what I mean. I'll take you to a favorite cove of mine. It's like the end of the world. It could end like this. I don't think I'd be frightened, even if it were. Or lonely either. No. Uh -huh. You know, I, I knew you'd get over it out here. I wonder what people would do if the world should end like this. Then they'd have time to say all the things they'd always wanted to say. Then they'd have the courage to say... For instance? Honest things. Such as? Such as telling you that I didn't particularly want to paint Eben's portrait. Then why have you gone to all this trouble? Because I wanted to see you again. Lonely people want friends. But they have to search very hard for them. It's difficult for them to... To find... Other lonely people. Yes. The fog's lifting. It wasn't the end of the world after all. You're the first person I ever brought here. And you know, the one time that I, I wish I could paint is when I'm here. Katie, do you suppose that you could catch all this? Oh, no. No, I'm not nearly a good enough painter. Oh, Bill, you were made for all this. Was I? <laughs> you know, I went to a class reunion this spring. Some of the fellas, they, well, they, they were ribbing me about being stuck way off down here. One of them even offered me a job. I guess I felt kind of sorry for me. Oh, if you only knew how I felt for him. You found your place in the world. I envy you. You know, you're the first person that's understood that. Don't ever give it up. I don't ever want to. I'm through at Dragonhead for a while, Katie. You're going away? Yes, I have to go up to Boston tomorrow to see the superintendent. Oh. Well, it's been lots of fun these past few days. I... I know I've had a wonderful time. I'll miss you, Bill. Oh, Katie. Oh, Bill. Come on, I'll take you over to the island in the speedboat. Thanks for bringing me across, Bill. I uh, I can go the rest of the way myself. No, but I'd like to walk you home. Oh, no, no, it's late and I have a uh, lot of things to do. What's the matter? What's the matter? You ashamed of me? Oh, no. Huh? <laughs> no, it isn't that at all. You wouldn't be holding out on me now. You haven't got a husband or anything like that, huh? <laughs> oh, of course huh? not. What an idea. Hmm? Well, good night, Bill. I'll sail your boat back in the morning. Thanks. We could have lunch, maybe, huh? If you'd like. I'll pick you up at the wharf at 12 o'clock. And, oh, Katie, when I go away, it, it won't be for long. I'm glad, Bill. Good night. Good night, Katie. Hello, sis. Pat. I thought I'd wait up for you, Katie. We haven't had a talk for a long time. I've been busy, Pat. Tell me the truth, Katie. That lighthouse keeper isn't old, is he? Yes, he is. He has a beard down to his ankles. Having fun these days, Pat? Bored stiff, frankly. Why don't you go to Hyannis? Your gang's all there. Not trying to get rid of me, are you, Katie? Don't be silly. You know, darling, you're not a very good liar. Now, who is he? Who's what? Pat, you have a one-track mind. All right, don't tell me. What'd you do tonight? I know something's happened to you. You were singing like mad in the shower this morning. And for an elderly lighthouse keeper with a beard down to his ankles, you spend an awfully long time in front of the mirror. I saw the hunky-dory offshore. Does that mean Tom Fraser's in town? Oh, Tom's getting to be a bit of a nuisance. He's a good catch, Pat. Want him? Oh, no. I know my limitations, Pat. I'm dead on going to bed. He must be wonderful. Bet you ten dollars I get it out of you. Ten dollars you don't? Such a divine night. No kind of night to be stuck in a house all by yourself. You should have gone out and warm enough to go without a coat. Painting in the dark, dear. <laughs> oh, I wish now I'd double that bet. <laughs> Darling, just so you'll feel better, I will be seeing Tom for the next few days. Lunch on the yacht tomorrow, and heaven knows what from then on. Good night. 
Night, Pat. Hey, Katie, where are you going? Hey, Katie. Well, good morning. Hey, what's the matter? Didn't you see me? Huh? I couldn't have looked very closely, could I? For a second there, I thought you'd forgotten all about our luncheon date. Date? Oh, Oh, no. No, I didn't forget. You were walking right past me. Oh, how could you think I'd forget? I'll be right back. I, um, I want to speak to that sailor at the end of the wharf. Oh, sure. Sure, go ahead. Morning, Phil. Morning, Miss Pat. Uh, Phil, will you please tell Mr. Fraser I can't possibly come out for lunch today? Yes, Miss Pat, I'll tell him. Thank you. Tell him I'm dreadfully sorry. You really dolled yourself up today. I always doll myself up when I have a luncheon engagement. I have a wonderful idea. Let's go to the cottage for lunch. Now, wait a minute. You know how you've been about keeping me away from there? It's a woman's privilege to change her mind. Well, well, that's just fine. Good. More coffee? No, no, thanks, Katie. I'm just right. It was a divine night last night, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. Unusual to have it warm enough to go without a coat. That's right. Katie, you got me going around in circles. Yeah, I don't know if I can quite explain it. But look, you're a swell person. I always knew that. But, well, it, it, it just seems that there was something lacking. Now, maybe I can explain it this way. It's like you were a cake. A cake? Uh-huh. Yeah. A cake without any frosting. And I guess, well, I guess most guys are kind of like the frosting. You know what I mean? And today, you think I'm well frosted. I'll say. <laughs> no, I, was, I was never more fooled in my life. <laughs> Katie. Katie, I guess you know that I think you're something special. I'm afraid I think you're something special, too. Well, what I... I really want to say is... Well, what was it you wanted to... Oh. Hello, Katie. You're not seeing things, Bill. It's true. Well, I'll... Be. Hello, Bill. I see you did keep our date for lunch. Well, I, I, I thought I did. <laughs> Look at him, Katie. Bill, if you could only see your face. That, that's very clever. <laughs> Which one of you think these things up? I'm always the one. Katie, I swear I was going to confess, but you came home just a second too soon. Well, it's lucky for you she did. You were just about to be kissed by a perfect stranger. As you can see, it's very easy to confuse us. Yes. Uh, Katie, your sister here is a very dangerous woman. Well, I better be on my way. I have to catch the four o'clock boat. Will you walk to the gate with me, Katie? Going away? Yes, I'm going to Boston overnight on business. Oh, uh, uh, thanks for the lunch. Um, Patricia. Uh, Patricia. Bill, Pat, Pat's apt to do crazy things. Oh, that's all right, Katie. Oh, uh, the Lippincotts are giving an old-fashioned barn dance tomorrow night. I'll be back in time. Would you like to go with me? I'd love to. All right, I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. I'll be ready. So long, Katie. So long, Bill. Have a good trip. I'd like to buy a paper bill, but I don't seem to have any change. Well, hello. Hello. Which one is it? You know. Uh, yes. I know. How'd you get here, Pat? Flew over. Lots of people have to go to Boston, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I guess they do. I haven't done a square dance bill since I was a kid. Hope you don't mind if I step all over your feet. Oh, we'll step on each other's feet, Katie. If you are Katie. I swear by my honor, it's Kate. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> well, here we go. Still, there's Pat. Huh? Well, so it is. I wonder how she knew about this. Uh, uh, maybe the Lippincott invited her. But she doesn't know the Lippincott. Well, maybe I mentioned it to her in Boston. Boston? Yes, I... I did, didn't you know that Pat went to Boston yesterday? No, I didn't. Well, well, good evening, Kate, dear. Hello, Freddie. Freddie, this is Bill Emerson, my cousin, Mr. Lindley. Well, how do you do, Mr. Emerson? Pat come with you, Freddie? Yes, yes, she did. She asked me to bring her. This... Uh, Sudden passion for the bucolic life. Hardly her type of thing, is it? Well, Bill, aren't you going to ask me to dance? Well, sure, Pat, sure. I'll be right back, Katie. Well, that was quick work. Katie, let's you and I have a nice cool drink of Applejack, shall we? No, thanks, Freddie. Katie, tell me something. Just where does Pat fit into this jigsaw puzzle? It's a long story, Freddie, and I don't feel like telling it. Excuse me, I think I'll... 
go out and have a cigarette. Katie? Freddie, don't bother about me. Hey, would you like to take a drive, Katie, huh? It's a fine night. Can I get you some coffee, then? You can drink it out here. Oh, for heaven's sake, say something. Katie, if that Bill Emerson means so much, do you fight for him? I can't. Why must you always let that sister of yours get ahead of you? Freddie, take me home. Why, Katie... I thought you'd be asleep. We missed you. Bill looked everywhere for you. Pat, you know I've never been very good at mincing words. What does Bill mean to you? I might as well admit it, Katie. I'm mad about him. And he feels the same way. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. It isn't anybody's fault. Bill's so fond of you, Katie. Over and over, he said what a swell person you are and what fun you'd had together. Oh, skip it. Pat, do you know Bill? Do you understand the kind of things he likes? The kind of life he likes? You've never known anybody like him before. When Bill's kind fall in love, they mean it. I know the kind of person Bill is, Katie, and I am mad about him. You must believe me. I believe you. And I wish you all the happiness in the world. You said yourself a minute ago that it wasn't anyone's fault. Go to bed, Pat. Go on before I make a fool of myself. Please. It was just one of those things, Kate's twin sister, Pat, and Bill Emerson. Their meeting, their falling in love, and now, in the sister's spacious home in New York, their marriage. Cousin Freddie has just observed that Kate has slipped away from the wedding guests and gone upstairs to her studio. I thought you were probably in here. I wanted to get away for a few minutes, Freddie. You should go back to the guests. Kate, you've got to forget Forget Pat, Bill, everything. There's nothing you can do about it. I know. I know there's nothing I can do about it. Have you made any plans? I'm going to work to paint. Now you're talking. That's my girl. Hello, hello. Long distance. I was talking... Hello, Kate. Are you still there? Yes, we were cut off, Freddie. But you were saying something about an exhibition. Yes, the Gruen Gallery on Madison Avenue. My oils and watercolors. Are you proud of me? Kate, that's just wonderful. When? Two weeks from tomorrow. Oh, good evening. Good evening. There's one nice feature about art exhibits. What? The buffet table. When the paintings bore you, try the hors d'oeuvres. I intend to fill up before I'm thrown out. Who's going to throw you out? Don't be funny. Look at me, I'm a bum. By any chance, are you also an artist? Enough of one to have an opinion of this exhibition. Oh, then you're a critic as well. You don't have to be a critic to recognize an amateur. Well, most of the people here don't seem to share your opinion. These people? What do you expect them to say? Well, I think I may as well tell you. I painted this collection. I was wondering when you'd confess. How'd you get in? I walked in. I was hungry. What do you do? I paint. But I never had an exhibition, if that's what you're driving at. If you had the opportunity, what would you do? You're making me an offer? I think I'd like to see some of your work, find out whether you're a phony or not. Well, let's get out of here. I'll show you. Now? Now or never. I'll get my coat and meet you outside. Ah, Miss Bosworth, don't you like my room? Don't you like my painting? Your kind never does. If you'd stop being class conscious for a minute, I'd like to say something. Go ahead. I owe you an apology. You most certainly are not a phony. What shall I do now, bow from the waist? What's your name? Carnock. Now that you've done me the great honor of praising my canvases, I suppose I'll have to start praising yours. Tell me what's wrong with my painting. Everything. Chiefly because you're what you are, stiff, Ingrown, afraid. I bet you're not even a woman. 
I know your kind, a checkbook in one hand and a paintbrush in the other, while someone like me can't even afford a decent pad of drawing paper or a tube of paint. What did you mean? I'm not even a woman. Yeah, that always gets them. You can criticize a woman's work, but when you suggest she's not a ball of fire, oh boy. What are you talking about? Come here, I'll show you. I think I'd better be going. Okay, go. But you're not a hopeless case, you know. How encouraging. Good night, Mr. Connor. All right, Connor. What happened this time? Why did Deirdre quit? She's the best model we've Because had. I happen to speak my mind about you and about the way you paint. Connor, I think it's time we settled a few things. You're most welcome to use this studio, you know that. But not if you continually upset everything and everybody in my home. First the servants, now Deirdre. Okay, go on with your smug little life if you want to, but you can count me out. Oh, stop being such a pig-headed boor. I'm perfectly willing to allow you to humiliate me as regards my work. I want it that way, but not as a person. Nor will I allow you to humiliate anybody else as long as you're in this house. Oh, go soak your head. Come on, let's get to work. Go and get your sink. Hello, yes? Oh, Bill. Well, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. Can't with you? Oh, I see. Why, yes, of course I can. Oh, don't be silly. You're not interfering with anything. No, I can be there in no time, Bill. Yes, I will. Goodbye, Bill. You can be where in no time? The calls department store. I thought we were going to work. Tomorrow, Connor. Tomorrow. Bill, it seems forever since I've seen you. It has been a long time, hasn't it? How's Pat? Oh, she's fine. Why'd you want to meet me here? Well, I uh, had so little time, and I want to get a birthday present for Pat. I thought you might be able to help me. Oh, I see. Well... What about lingerie or a, or a negligee? Oh, sure, that's fine. They're over this way, Bill. What are you doing in New York? Uh, making arrangements to take a trip to Chile. Oh, for a Yankee, that's a far cry in New England to Chile. That's right. A new job? Uh-huh. Pat going with you? Yes, uh, yes, she is. You remember my telling you about uh, a job my college friend offered me? Yes. Yes, I remember very well. Well, I finally took it. It's even more money than I thought. I can't think of you away from the island somehow. Well, I had to do something to make more dough. I can't let Pat go on spending her own money. Oh. Here's a negligee, Bill. It looks like Pat. May I help you, madam? Hold it up to you, will you, Katie? Oh, it's a wonderful style for you, madam. Well, am I a prize dope? What's the matter? Well, if it's Pat's birthday tomorrow, it's yours, too. Of course. Well, I'd like to get you something, Katie. Uh, oh, that's sweet of you, Bill. No, thank you. Oh, but there must be something here you no, like. No, no. Thank you very much. Are you taking the negligee, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, well, wrap it as a gift, eh? Yes, sir. You know, I'm surprising Pat. She doesn't expect me to Thursday, but I, I want to be there for her birthday. Oh, Bill, how stupid of me. I completely forgot I have an engagement. I must run well, Wouldn't you have time for a drink before I catch the train? Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I really have Well, uh, well... It's been wonderful seeing you again, Katie. Wonderful to see you. And thanks a lot for helping me out. Oh, it was fun. Goodbye, Bill. Give my love to Pat. Carla, haven't you gone home yet? Where have you been? Kind of late. Oh, I went to a newsreel and I walked around the lake in the park. Who's this guy, Bill? Where is he? Gone. You look awful. Can I fix your drink? No, thanks, Connor. You know... I've been doing a lot of thinking. All this art stuff's been a substitute for something, hasn't it? You will be glad to know, Carnock, I've come to a decision. Hmm? I'm a third-rate artist. I always will be. So you won't have to bother with me anymore. What are you going to do? I don't know. I haven't decided. Always running away. No wonder you lost him. We won't discuss it, Connor. You'll never land a guy all closed up inside like this. But I wasn't always like this. People change. Remember what I said when I first met you? I most certainly do. You kind of went for me then, only you got cold feet. Connor, your conceit really amazes me at times. Man needs woman. Woman needs man. That's basic. Everything else starts from that. Art, music, the whole works. Only women like you want to make something important out of it. You want a guy to stifle himself for you, the grand passion, all of that baloney. Yes, we do. Now, don't go female on me. Get wise to yourself. Oh, leave me alone. Sure you're not running away from me now? Really? That's better. What's the matter? 
Would you like being kissed? I'm sorry, Clark. I guess it is the grand passion or nothing. Connick, I think I'll go to the island in the morning. Try and figure things out. Hello? This is Western Union. We have a telegram for Frederick Lindley. I'm sorry, but Mr. Lindley isn't here. May I take the message, please? It's from New York City. Arriving this evening, don't bother to meet me. Love, it's signed Kate. Oh, thank you very much. What are you doing on the island? I thought you and Bill were on your way to Chile. I wasn't able to go. He went alone. Where's Freddie? He got my wire, didn't he? Freddie had to go to Providence for a few days. Oh, I didn't know. You look tired, Katie. Anything wrong? Nothing in particular. Pat, why couldn't you go to Chile? Oh, I had a perfectly dreadful cold. Something like the flu. What a shame. Bill was so excited about your going. Bill's so naive about a lot of things. But that's Bill. Naive Tay's a bit trying to live with all the time. Katie, you haven't said a word about my dungarees. I'm getting to be a big outdoors girl now, learning to sail, all that sort of nonsense. That I want to see. I'll prove it to you tomorrow. We can sail out towards Dragonhead, your old stamping ground. Take off your hat, Katie, and stay a while. I'm coming about, Katie. Well, what do you think of your new skipper? She's all right. Pat, whatever possessed you to come down here? Oh, I wanted to see the gang again. Pat, it looks as if we were going into some heavy weather. That's wonderful. Hey, look out, Katie. I'm going to jive. Pat, it looks really nasty. We better turn back. Not on your life. I've always wanted to sail in a storm. Katie, you were right. We should have gone back. It's too late now. All we can do is hope to get in Lee of the lighthouse. Watch it, Pat. Oh, I should have insisted we go back. You manage the rudder, Pat. I'll handle the sail. Hang on, Pat. Katie, we're heading straight for the reef. I know, pull it back. Lee wouldn't hang on. No, Pat, no, don't stand up. Get down. Get down to the bottom of the boat. Hello. Hello, police headquarters. This is Evan Fold, your Dragonhead Lighthouse. Better get over here as soon as you can. There's been a drowning. A girl named Kate Bosworth. I pulled her sister out. The other is a goner. Yeah, and bring a doctor with me. The doctor's still inside with Mrs. Emerson. She'll be coming out of that sedative soon. I'll need all the facts for the police record, so suppose you... I told you all the facts. I looked out, and there was the boat heading for the rocks. Sail was all torn to shreds. Could you see which one of them was handling the boat? How could I tell in a sea like that? I couldn't tell them apart anyways. When you got out to them, were you able to see the body of the other one, or was it under the boat? I never did see the body. Coast Guard ain't found it yet either. They never will. Mrs. Emerson? Mrs. Emerson? It's all right, Mrs. Emerson. I'm Dr. Knowles from the village. Mrs. Emerson? Mrs. Emerson? Mrs. Emerson. Mrs. Emerson. Why does he call me Mrs. Emerson? Bill. 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 She's opened her eyes. She's coming around. Oh. oh. There. There, Mrs. Emerson. Everything's all right. We just want you to keep very warm and quiet. I tried to pull her back. I tried. We know, Mrs. Emerson. Evan saw you. He knows you did everything you could. No. I'm the police chief, Mrs. Emerson. Now, your sister came up to visit you yesterday, didn't she? I... I don't... She's confused. Don't you bother her with that stuff now. Mrs. Emerson, ever since it happened, you've been lying here crying for Bill over and over again. You keep saying... I tried to save her. Well, Bill ain't going to blame you, Mrs. Emerson. If the good Lord had wanted to take you instead of her, why, he'd have done it. So you get well and strong now, Mrs. Emerson, and be a good wife to Bill. 
she'd have wanted it that way. Evan, Mr. Lindley's come. Yeah. It's your cousin, Mrs. Emerson. He's come to see you. Thank you. I won't talk to you very long, dear. I don't want to tire you. Can you understand me, Pat? Yeah, dear. Bill is coming home. He just answered my wire. He arrives in New York by plane Friday. By plane on Friday. Oh, Bill. Bill. <laughs> Three days ago, Patricia Emerson was drowned off Dragonhead Lighthouse, and her body never recovered. But as far as the world is concerned, the girl lost in the storm was Kate. Motivated by her love for Bill, overcome by the temptation to be his wife, Kate has assumed her dead sister's identity. At her home in New York, she and Freddie have just returned from the airport. With them is Bill Emerson. You really shouldn't have bothered going to the airport, Pat. Oh, of course I'd meet you, Bill. Don't be silly. You know, you've hardly said a word. Well, there's not much to say. I'm terribly sorry about Kate. I hope you don't mind if we stay here a few days so I could, you know, straighten out some of her things. Oh, I prefer to stay. I've got some work to do here in New York. I think we could all do with a drink. Freddy? Uh, no, not for me, Pat. I have an appointment. Oh, but you simply can't leave us. I'll drop around tomorrow. You're being frightfully unsocial, Freddy. Goodbye, Bill. I Call me if there's anything I can do. Thanks a lot for your help, Freddy. This really hit him, didn't it? I know just how it feels. It's very strange for me without Kate. Would you like a scotch? You know I drink bourbon, Pat. Oh, yes, of course. Kate is gone, but, you know, somehow I, I just can't believe it. I didn't know she meant so much to you. We were very good friends. That doesn't mean that I was in love with her. She knew that. How do you know? Oh, well, she... She told me just before the wedding... Bill, I'm so glad you're back. There's nothing any different between us, Pat. I, I came back only because of Kate's death. As soon as you... Why, the astonishment. Now, don't try to pretend that you've forgotten. Oh, no. No, of course I, I haven't forgotten. I I only thought that... Perhaps... I know you've been through a lot. That's why I didn't go directly to a hotel. It's unfortunate that the accident happened at this time, but I think that just as soon as you get Kate's affairs wound up, you'd better go to Reno and get it over. Reno? Pat, it was your idea as much as mine. Oh, yes, of course. It's just... Bill. Bill, would you mind very much if I went to Boston tonight? I I could come back later and straighten out Kate's things. If you'd prefer. And, and Bill. Yes? Could we let this divorce business ride for a while? I, I can't seem to think about it right now. What's there left to think about? I want another chance. Do you think you deserve one? Oh, maybe not, but I want it. Well, that's the first honest thing you've said in months. Let me try. All right, Pat. You'll probably change your mind when you get to Boston, but in the meantime, we'll let it go at that. Thank you, Bill. How long will you stay in New York? Oh, I don't know. Two, three days. Be sure and wire me when you're coming. I, I'd like to have everything ready for you. Yes. Uh, yes, I'll wire you. What? Your ticket. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Tickets, please. Boston. I'm going to Boston. To Pat's home. How will I know? Little things, what rooms there are. What Pat used to do. And the servants. I don't even know their names. I might be out of my mind. And for what? Bill's going to leave me. What did Pat do to me? What did she do? Hello? Hello? Is that you, Mrs. Emerson? Yes. Who is this, please? Why, Lucy, ma'am. Lucy? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Lucy. I didn't recognize your voice. I, I'm in Boston, Lucy. I just got in and I'm at the station. Yes, ma'am. Are you coming straight home? Yes, I'll take a cab. I, I thought I'd call you first. Mr. Talbot phone. Oh, well, say, thank you, Lucy. I'll be home in a few minutes. I certainly didn't expect you back so soon, Mrs. Emerson. Uh, Mr. Emerson will be home by the end of the week. Oh, for heaven's sake. I thought he'd be in Chile for three months. Lucy, I think I'll go right to my room. I, I have a headache. Oh. You'd better take my bag up. What are you waiting for, Lucy? I thought you said you were going up. Well, I, I, I am. I, 
I just want to see what this mail is. Yes, ma'am. I wouldn't bother about unpacking tonight. Lucy, just put the bag on the bed. Well, I guess the mail can wait. Mr. and Mrs. Devereaux calls. Oh? They're leaving tomorrow. Well, I, I'll call them later. <laughs> You're looking things over, aren't you, Mrs. Emerson? I'm sure glad I kept everything dusted. And the house looks very nice, Lucy. Those roses on your dressing table. I thought you might like them there. Mr. Talbot sent them. Thank you, Lucy. He's been calling every day. I didn't think you'd mind if I told him you were coming home. That'll be all, Lucy. Don't you want me to call him? What? Mr. Talbot. He said he'd be there all evening. Uh, well, I'll attend to it later. But he's moved. He said to tell you he finally found an apartment. The Empire House. Apartment 326. Thank you. What about Alma? I better let Alma know you're home. Well, couldn't that wait, too? Well, it can if you want, Mrs. Emerson. But if you knew my cooking as well as I do, you'd tell Alma to be here first thing tomorrow morning. Oh, of course, tell her to be here. Yes, ma'am. Good night, Mrs. Emerson. Good night, Lucy. Oh, Bill. Bill. Who is this Talbot? Is that what Pat did to me? Who's the telegram from, ma'am? Mr. Talbot? I just figured since you won't talk to him on the phone, maybe why? Lucy, Mr. Emerson will be home this afternoon. Here's your coffee, Bill. Oh, uh, help yourself to cream and sugar. Thank you. And here, your tobacco. Isn't Alma the world's best cook? We're lucky to have her. Look, Pat, I, I know all this is as difficult for you as it is for me. Oh, but it isn't, Bill. I love being here with you. You do believe that, don't you? I want to. You know that. What about Talbot? Have you seen him? No. Surely you must realize that that's the most important thing to get straight between us. I don't want to see him. Don't you think you owe it to him to tell him that it's all over? Oh, perhaps it isn't over. Oh, yes, it is, Bill. I swear it. He's telephoned and sent me flowers, but I haven't acknowledged them. I, Well, I thought that was the very best way to handle it. Pat, until you get this Talbot thing straightened out once and for all, there isn't anything more we can say to each other. Oh, Bill. Empire House. Apartment 326. Pat. Hello, Jim. Well, come in, darling, come in. Martini? No, thank you. I don't believe I feel like one. Jim, I know I should have called you. Yes, Lucy told me Bill was back. I must say I was surprised, considering everything. He came back today. And just where does that put me? I have something to tell you, Jim. I find out I'm still in love with Bill. I'm sorry. That's perfect. You mess up my life when you say you're sorry. I happen to have arranged to divorce my wife for your sake. I suppose it never occurred to you that someone could say a thing and mean it. There's something behind all this, Pat. What is it? No, no, there isn't. You must believe that. I'm in love with Bill. I always will be. But you can't mean this after all we've meant to each other. So it was just an interlude with you. Yes, that's what it was. You dirty little double-crosser. You're doing to me what you did with all the others, aren't you? The others? You didn't think I knew about them, but things get around, Pat. You're not a very discreet person. Oh, I wish... Get out. Get out! Why the suitcase? I'm leaving, Bill. May I ask why? You were right. It wouldn't have worked out. I should have known it wouldn't. You've seen Talbot. And you're still in love with him, is that it? Oh, no, no, it isn't. Well, if you're not still in love with him, then why are you leaving? Bill, you can't want me to stay, can you? Not after. You said the only thing to be straightened out between us was the Talbot business. But what about the others? Much worse. Surely you knew about them. If you didn't, you were a fool. Don't you know you've been the laughing stock of this whole town? I don't understand. I don't understand. <laughs> All right, my dear. As soon as I got you... Patty, I hope I won't be a nuisance. Don't talk like that, ever. Now, sit down. While you were unpacking, I made some tea. You look as if you needed it. Uh, Patty, I don't know what to say. I had... I had so many things to tell you. You see, I've left Bill. 
Oh, that isn't what I wanted to say at all. Freddie, if I were to uh, tell wait you... Wait a minute. I think I know what you want to tell me, Kate. How long did you know? Well, I suspected just after the accident. But I tried to put such thoughts out of my mind. And then when you called and said you were coming here to the island, of course I knew... It's absolutely unbelievable that you would do such a thing. But it seemed my only chance for happiness. But you were never a liar, Kate. How could you think you could live a lie? I didn't think. I just let it happen. Oh, it was so simple at first. It wasn't going to hurt anybody. But after I found out how Pat had treated Bill, I... Well, I couldn't go through with it. She'd hurt him so terribly that he'll never forget. And no matter what I try to do, it will always be there. What are you going to do? I don't know. I want to do what will hurt Bill the least. To a man like Bill, the truth is the only way. Freddie, would you forgive me if I went out for a while? Certainly. You see, Freddie, Bill never loved me. Bill. Bill. I've never brought anyone here before, Katie. Oh, tell me what you do. Tell me. The one time that I wish I could paint is when I'm here. Oh, Katie, do you suppose that you could catch this? What should I do? What should I do? Katie. Katie. Oh, I knew I'd find you here, Katie. Bill, then you know. Yes, I know. I can't even ask you to forgive me. I don't want you to ask me anything. I don't want you to tell me anything. Oh, Bill. Bill. I'm the one who needs forgiveness, Katie. Oh, yes, I fell in love with Pat, but it was never right. Not the way we were always right to each other. I've known that for so long. Oh, but all that's happened. We'll forget it, Katie. We'll forget everything that happened as though we never left the island. Can you do that? Yes. Oh, Katie, I love you so. I love you so much. 